Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Crystal. Last time, we got our journey started off here in the Kanto region, and we were able to claim our first badge, the Thunder Badge. Very, very nice. This time, we find ourselves in Saffron City, and I think we're going to be exploring the place before eventually moving on to this city's gym. First things first, we have Mr. Psychic's house. Anyone who has played any game with the Kanto region in it knows what this is. I got it! You wanted this! And he will give us TM29, which contains what else but Psychic. Very good. It may lower the target's special defense. Now, Espeon already got this move through level up, but if there's a good chance, I think, that someone else on our team can learn it, if they can, they'll probably get it as well. I'm, I'm curious. I haven't checked beforehand. Let's see. Uh, Electabuzz can learn it. Wow, that's, um, surprising. We might give Electabuzz that move then. Very, very cool. Anyway, right over here is the main attraction in Saffron City. This is the Sylph Company office building. And inside we have a whopping zero Team Rocket grunts, which is really nice. Welcome, this is Sylph Company's head office building. Now, unfortunately, there's not much here for you. I have a feeling this is another instance of them not wanting to program more than they had to in the Kanto region, so they only programmed this one room in this entire building. Only employees are permitted to go upstairs. But since you came such a long way, have this neat little souvenir and we get an upgrade, which unless you want to trade to evolve your Porygon is a completely useless item. It's Sylph Company's latest product, it's not for sale anywhere yet. Very, very cool. It'll be a while in the series before you can actually purchase that item. Now, I'm going to point out something right here. There is a house in Saffron City that is home to someone known as the Copycat. We're not going to be seeing her yet. Mainly because it will kick off a small little side quest that I do not want to complete right now. Because we can't actually get all the way to the end of it. So when we are able to do that, that's when we'll go and talk to her. Anyway... Here we have the shop inventory, pretty standard stuff, figured I'd show that off for you guys in case you needed to know where to go to buy certain things because this is classic Pokemon. All the shops having the same inventory counter is not a thing yet because they love us so much. Right here, everyone welcome, Fighting Dojo. This place is absurdly important in the remake, but here it's really just another room. Hello. Karate King, the Fighting Dojo's master, is in a cave in Johto for training. Yep, remember way back when in episode 39, I think it was? Yep, he came from here. Very cool. The lore behind this area is that it was originally Saffron's gym being of the fighting type, but unfortunately, since Psychic beats fighting, the Psychic type gym won out, and that is what the gym is here now. Anyway, there were two Pokeballs in front of these scrolls back in Generation 1, and you could only take one of them, which means one of these scrolls went on red during your playthrough, but here you can read them both. This one says enemies on every side, and this one says what goes around comes around. Very cool. And right here we have a Focus Band, which is a consumable held item that will allow you to survive one hit. Well, actually, no. Focus Sash is consumable, and it's not in this game, I don't think. Focus Band has a chance of letting you survive a lethal hit, which is very, very cool. But honestly, I'm probably not going to be using it. Anyway, this is what the main attraction of the city is. The Saffron City Pokemon Gym, Leader Sabrina, the Master of Psychic Pokemon. This is going to be Espeon's gym, because it's got Bite, and it's got the black glasses, it's got that sky-high special attack. I think you know what my plan of attack is. Yo, champion making. A trainer as skilled as you doesn't need to be told how to deal with Psychic-type Pokemon, right? I expect great things from you. Good luck! Yep, and me, being the good trainer I am, hey, I have a, uh, a map next to me. Yeah, I'm weak. The power of all those you defeated comes to me. And we have 
the amazing Kanto Trainer battle music once again. I'll be honest, even though I prefer the Johto uh, Trainer battle music to this one, I still think this is a very solid song. And again, with the very, very underwhelming um, levels on the opponents. Of course. Now, I do apologize if I seem a little low energy this episode, because I'll be honest, I have been lifting heavy equipment most of the day today, and I am very, very tired. Luckily, we managed to get it all moved, so hopefully won't need to happen again for a while. Anyway, we have Hypno right here, which I think might be one of the first times we've seen a Hypno. Its sprite looks weird to me, I don't know why. But anyway, it is off screen now, and we are all good. Now, in Generation 1, this gym had seven trainers in it. In this generation, it only has four, so you don't have to worry about that. Strong, far too strong, she says. Anyway, through this warp tile, this will plunk us into this corner. Psychic power is the power of your soul. Very cool, very cool indeed. All right, now I'm really, really liking the fact that we finally get to a psychic type gym because I have to say psychic types are probably some of my favorite Pokemon out there. And it's always nice when a game has a psychic type gym in it. We kind of had a bit of a drought of psychic type gyms in uh, generations I think four and five didn't have gyms of this type. So it was really nice to see them back in X and Y. Now, one thing I feel like we can complain about is where is our Dark-type gym? Seriously. Like, there is no reason to not have a Dark-type gym. I mean, heck, we have a Fairy gym already, but no Dark gym. The Fighting Dojo next door was once this city's gym. Yep, I'm pretty sure this bit of lore also makes an appearance in Generation 1, but they also mention it here as well. Basically, the way you're going to want to approach every area in the Kanto region is that a lot of stuff has changed in the three years since Generation 1, so even though you're familiar with the region and it'll definitely be a bit of a nostalgia trip, some stuff is different. And the weird thing is, I've always perceived the uh, Generation 1 storyline to be what is quote-unquote different because this game was my first exposure to the Kanto region, so I feel like I have a much different perspective on this region than most people do, because I did this game first, and then I played Generation 1 Story second. So yeah, interesting stuff. Do not want to change. That was a misclick on my part. I do have to say, last episode and this episode, and probably the remainder of the series, are being recorded with a, um, a uh, wired Xbox 360 pad, because... This 8-bit do, or 8-bit do, or however you say it, this uh, third-party controller I have, it's been disconnecting constantly during gameplay, and I'm sure you all have noticed it. And one thing you might not know is that during that grinding session before episode 42, I had this thing disconnect on me at least three dozen times. I see it clearly. I can see into your soul. Yes, my soul of complaining about gaming controllers. But yeah, and then I went to record last episode, and before actually starting the video, I had this controller refuse to connect multiple times, and then when I could get it to connect, it would disconnect almost immediately. And mind you, this is a wired USB connection. So, I really, really do not know what's up with that, so... We're switching controllers. It's been a long time on the channel since we've done that. But yes, that is what we are doing. It's really disappointing, too, because the um, third-party controller I was using was like 38 bucks. I mean, to be fair, it lasted us through the last bit of Blaze Black 2, all of Earthbound Beginnings, and all of Yellow and a decent chunk of this Let's Play, so I guess I can't be too mad about it. Anyway, though I read you, I still lost. Yep, you indeed lost. Now, I do have to say, I really don't think we need to heal for this gym fight. 
We've done all four trainers here without taking any damage to speak of whatsoever. So I think we're just going to go right into the gym fight. And I think we will approach from this side, this side, this side makes the room symmetrical. I got to think of the thumbnail, you know? I knew you were coming. Three years ago, I had a vision of your arrival. Looks like some trainer sort of jogged this woman's future memory. You're after my badge. I don't enjoy battling, but it's my duty as a leader to confer badges on anyone who has proven him or herself worthy. Since you wish it, I will show you my psychic powers. And we have the awesome music again. Man oh man, I love this music. Leader Sabrina wants to battle. She is starting out with an Espeon level 46 with the moves Sand Attack, Quick Attack, Swift, and Psychic. Kind of crummy set to be honest that sand attack is mainly there to piss off players more than anything else luckily we got a flinch which is very very nice now you're gonna notice something about sabrina's team pretty quickly you're probably looking at these levels and you're thinking to yourself wait is sabrina weaker than she was in pokemon yellow yes she is that should give you a good perspective on how wonky the level curve is in this game. Anyway, next up we have a female Mr. Mime, because Mr. Mime got its name prior to the addition of Gender to the game. It has the moves Barrier, Reflect, Baton Pass, and Psychic, so it actually only has one way, as far as I can tell, of directly damaging you. And considering Espeon resists that, we're probably going to be pretty good, and we get really really lucky with the flinch hacks right there i mean seriously and down it goes very good and next up we have alakazam her last pokemon yeah she only has three pokemon what this alakazam is level 48 so we're still not out leveling lance with the moves recover future sight psychic and reflect pretty standard Alakazam set that you'd see in single player gameplay and of course Sabrina has a hyper potion on her although I don't think this is going to make too much of a difference in this fight something tells me it's going to go down pretty quickly right here unless she heals again which she does not and it is not fast enough to sneak in a recover and with that we have completed the second gym of the Kanto region Yep, about 13 minutes into this video. Your power, it far exceeds what I foresaw. Maybe it isn't possible to fully predict what the future holds. Okay, you win. You earned yourself the Marsh Badge and a double digit number next to the badge count on the save screen, which I think is the much cooler aspect of this. That jingle never gets old. Marsh Badge draws out your subliminal powers. Although I fail to accurately predict your power, this much I know to be true. You will become a celebrated and beloved champion. Well, I technically already am a champion, so I'm not sure what that dialogue is supposed to convey. Anyway, let's see what you have to say. That was another fantastic bat. Okay, you're seriously, seriously running out of ideas at this point. Anyway, I'm going to go heal real quick. Alright, now that we have healed, there is one last thing in Saffron shit. <laughs> that could have been bad. In Saffron City. Oh boy, can you tell how tired I am right now? There's one last thing I would like to show before we move onwards. Saffron City Magnet Train Station. Head on in here, and we have this room. This room should look extremely familiar if you did some searching around Goldenrod City. I don't believe I ever actually went into this building in Goldenrod City, however. It's immediately to the right of the radio tower. The Magnet Train is a super modern rail liner that uses electricity and magnets to attain incredible speed. However, if there isn't any electricity... Yep, this should explain to you why it was not possible to simply hop a train and head to Kanto much earlier in the game. It is because it is powered from the Kanto side, and unfortunately, with the power out, this train is not going to function. 
I'm sorry, but the magnet train isn't operating now. This is your main motivation to get the power back online in the Kanto region. It will allow you use of this train, which will allow you to fast travel between Goldenrod City and Saffron City whenever you darned well please. Unfortunately, that's not a thing right now, and we definitely have to get that power back on as soon as possible. Anyway, next up I would like to show that from Saffron City, we can either go east, north, or west. There is no limitation to where you are allowed to go from this point. Which basically means Saffron City is your first major decision on how you would like to progress through the game. Personally, I think we're going to be heading out the westward direction. Some people might disagree with me on this, but honestly, I'd rather go over there because there's a lot of cool stuff to go over in the next town. Over. Anyway, one more thing I'd like to show is even though the radio is broadcasting in Johto just fine, it is not broadcasting in Kanto, and based on recent information that has come to light, you can probably guess why this is. And, also worth noting, the radio signals in Johto are not strong enough to reach out here, so you can't pick up any Johto-specific radio channels over here, and all of the Kanto-specific radio channels are simply dead for the time being, so definitely worth pointing that out because it's a very, very interesting little factoid for this point in the game. A little girl who is an expert at mimicking people lives here. She even mimics, mimics the people she's conversing with. It's confusing. Yes, indeed it is. This is the home of the copycat. However, since her side quest is not fully completable at this point in the game, we're not going to go see her quite yet, although I can promise we will go see her very, very soon. Anyway, heading out this way... Did you hear about the accident at the power plant? It's located in the east, close to Lavender Town. Uh-huh, so there was an accident at the power plant, and that's why the power is not running. Also, I feel it's worth mentioning, this remix of the generic Kanto route theme, I really, really like it. I don't know why, but it's just got this, this peaceful, quaint feeling to it. I don't know, I kind of like it. Also, I like how they redid the grass texture for the Kanto region. I'm not sure why they did this, but they redid a lot of textures for Kanto. The grass, the ledges, the uh, whatever this is I'm walking on because I can't call it grass because that would be confusing. I'm not sure why they did that because it takes up valuable cartridge space they could have used to add actual content to the game. Anywho, right over here we have this locked door. It's locked. What's this flyer? Uncouth trainers have been holding battles in the underground path. Because of rising complaints by local residents, the underground path has been sealed indefinitely. Celadon police. Yep, any veterans of the Kanto region would know that there are two underground paths that both run underneath Saffron City. The north-south one is temporarily closed due to the power plant issue, but the east-west one is simply non-existent in Generation 2. And unlike most other things that they cut out of the game to save space in Gen 2, this underground path is also not in Gen 4 at all, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, right up here, this patch of grass. I have a bone to pick with this patch of grass. Remember back at the very top of the Goldenrod Radio Tower? where we fought with that one last Team Rocket executive and he used a Houndour on his team, and you're like, hmm, that Pokemon seems cool. I wonder when I can get it. Only now are you able to get this Pokemon. Houndour will show up in this patch of grass at nighttime only, and it can be evolved into Houndoom. Now, this drives me crazy. Because this is a brand new Pokemon that was not in red, blue, and yellow. It was introduced in gold and silver. So why can you not at all obtain it in the region in which the main story takes place? And this is not the first instance of this happening. It's going to happen at least one more time before our adventure is over with. 
anyway, rant aside, I stayed on this route for a while just to give it the time of day and its due respect, because believe it or not, that's the entire route. Seriously. We're all the way over here in Celadon City. That's probably the only route that we just went through. That's probably the only route in the entire Kanto region that has not been drastically shortened from its original iteration. And I think the reason for that is obvious. It's so darn short already, I don't know what the deal is with that. Anyway, right here. This is important. Hi. I'm back visiting my hometown. It's been quite a while. Oh, by the way, David, have you caught the legendary Pokémon Raikou and Entei? Okay, if you catch even one, I hope that you'll inform me. I'm counting on you, David. Yep, Eugene is here for some reason, and he wants you to catch Raikou and Entei. This is of note, because this is technically, as far as I know, the earliest point in the game that you can obtain a certain rainbow-colored Pokémon. However, we're not going to be doing that, and we're not going to be reaping the various rewards of that for another little bit. So I figured I'd point this out, but we're not going to be acting on it for a while. Anyway, I think with that we are going to end things off here. So, this past episode of Pokémon Crystal, we explored Saffron City, and we walked away with our 10th Pokémon League Gym Badge, the Marsh Badge, which I think is really, really cool. Like, look, if we bring up the save menu, double digits on the badges. That's beautiful. And next time on Pokémon Crystal, now that we are here in Celadon City, as you might expect, there is a gym here as well, and I would like to knock that one out before we progress even further on our adventure through the Kanto region. So without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.